Welcome to the Lipis Report. I am really excited about um, this segment because we're going to be demonstrating the active active features of Brocade's VCS architecture with Javan Sharma and also Varel Vimawala. Hi everyone, uh, we're now about to show you the uh, layer one multipathing uh, test and also there are two things with this. We want to show how easy it is to do auto provisioning and also how easy it is to create a brocade trunk. So with me is Devan, say hello. Hello, uh, hi folks. Uh, so we're gonna show what Nick just talked about. So Excellent, yeah. so first I um, want you to show us um, that we have a switch but it's not connected to the network and um, and how well, easy it is to configure it. So first let's make sure that everyone knows that it's there but it's not connected. Sure, okay, let me show you Nick. So uh, look at this, so here, here I, here's my fabric. So if I do show for VCS, it shows you the fabric. So we have uh, four switches and uh, three switches in this fabric. So the four switches yeah. here, it shows the status of being online. Yeah. And then these are their host names, like right there. Right. Okay. Exactly. And then I'm going to show you a switch which hasn't yet joined the fabric. So you do the show, uh, show VCS. And here you see that this is a online and switch is online, but it, it hasn't joined the fabric. There is no fabric. And what we're going to do now next is we're going to connect a cable from this switch to this switch. And then we'll see how the, uh, and then we'll sh show you how it f becomes a part of the fabric and it uh, becomes a node in the fabric without any configuration required. Excellent, great. So, uh, and I'm the one who's going to actually connect the cables to show you really how easy it actually is. So, let's go into the lab. Here we go. And... Now, let's go see if that came up on the network. And we're back. Um, so now I want to basically ask uh, Javan to basically look at and show us if that switch now is part of the fabric. Sure, Nick. Like, let's take a look. So let's see what happened. Sure. Fabric ISL. And here you go. Yeah. So you look at this. Okay. Yeah, that's the switch you added. And yeah. see, there's a 10 gig link. Yeah. Then there's, there's a trunk there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And it's the. Uh, uh, 36 uh, VDX. Yeah, that's part of the fabric now. So let's see on this one also. So show fabric ISL, and you see there's a 10 gig link. Yeah, so it's from the fabric now with the. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. So all I had to do was just connect the two switches together with a 10 gig link uh, cable, and it's part of the network. What if we want to add bandwidth um, between that switch and another switch? So how do we create a trunk? Um, no problem, simple. Just go and add the cables, more cables and more uh, more bandwidth. Do the same thing again? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, we're gonna do that. Okay, great. So now you saw that um, the 6700 um, came up, part of the network with a 10 gig link. Uh, let's increase the bandwidth. Let's create a brocade trunk. And the way we do that is that we take another cable and we just connect the two switches uh, together. So we connect the 6700 into an 8700. Let's add the bandwidth and let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. That's one line. There's a second one. All right, so um, let's take a look. And so we should have a 20 gig link uh, between the 8700 and the 6700, okay? Okay, great, so we're back. And uh, so now I just connected uh, two switches with two 10 gigabit, 10 gigabit ethernet links, no CLI command inputs whatsoever. Uh, we should see a 20 gig uh, trunk. So, Devon? Uh, let's see. I mean, we, uh, there's no CLI command needed, so it should be 20 gig. So let's run the command and check what's the bandwidth. Okay, Very there good. you go. So it's 20 gig. Yeah. So um, great. So we have a 20 gig uh, trunk now between uh, the two switches, um, and it's the VCS fabric that basically recognized it and then increased the bandwidth for it. Yeah. And uh, there it is again. Um, you know, on that switch. So. 
great. So that's it. That's the auto provisioning. Easy to add a switch and also easy to add trunk bandwidth as well. So I'm here with Javon and we're going to talk about layer two uh, multipathing. Now this is really important because remember the whole point about multipathing is to get rid of spanning tree. And so what we did in spanning tree, we had an active standby uh, configuration. We have active active now. So what we really want to see is that when we have a certain amount of traffic coming in, that it's being evenly distributed across a group, a trunk of active active ports. So now we, what we just did in the level one of multipathing, we showed how easy it was to create a trunk. Well, basically we're now taking that and creating a network made of trunks, right? So um, Javon, what I want to ask you to do is you can show me how much traffic we have coming into a couple of switches that we've created trunks for already. Okay, okay let me show you then what is the traffic coming in. So we have two switches where the traffic is uh, currently coming in on the four, uh, on two in the four channels. Okay. So let's let's look at this one. So if you look at this, uh, the traffic coming in is on the first two port channels. So we have 23 giga, uh, gigabytes of uh, gigabits of traffic. Okay. So that's coming in on first two port channels. So each member is getting this much traffic. So these are the six member links, three on each port Very channel. Good. And that's the uh, Ixia gear is generating that traffic into like the switch. Yeah, exactly. And then we have another switch which is also sending the same traffic. So if you. Uh, and they are sending to each other. So, so this is one. Uh, this one also has those support channels sending this traffic. Yep. Uh, these are the member links. Okay, and these are the. So we're basically we have six 10 gigabit Ethernet links. So we have 60 gigabits of traffic, and that's a member as you define exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay, great. So that's what's coming in. So let's see what's going out. So going out meaning that how much is coming into like the 8770s. Perfect. Yeah. So let me show you. So the, we have a multi uh, layer two multipath here. So what we have is uh, within the fabric, we have got uh, two. Uh, this uh, each of the top of the racks which connects to two top uh, two switches. So you see there's 60 gig uh, aggregate bandwidth. Yep. So going to in each direction. Right. And so we have 60 gigabits each into the fabric. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how the traffic is going out. So we can check on this one, for example. So. So when we look at this one, so this is the, this was the traffic coming in. Now this is the traffic which is going out. Okay. So the, these are the these are your links. Right. So the first six are going to the first switch, and yep. the second six are going to the second six uh, second switch. And so right. you see that the traffic is getting uh, load balance. Uh, Fifty percent of the traffic is going to switch one. Fifty percent yep. is going to switch two. And uh, that 50 percent traffic is now split across those six links, equal, almost equally divided across those six, six links. Yeah, and that's, that's very, very important. Again, like if this was spanning tree, you'd see 100 percent and zero. Uh, and other hash kind of uh, MLAGs, you'd see maybe 80 percent in a couple of links and maybe 20 percent in another few links. So what we have here is a full utilization and distribution of the traffic across these trunks. So. That's layer three multipath. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. This last test in the Active Active series here is unique to the industry and Brocade brought it to the marketplace. It's what we call the layer three Active Active and Gateways uh, test. And so this is how uh, we designed it. So take a look at the configuration. So first we start down here on the bottom. It's the Ixia gear with multiple virtual servers. Now, this is normally kind of the top of rack scenario, so we have servers connected into, uh, it could be a 6700 series or an 8700 series switch. And then those are going to the core of the network. And in here we have three different uh, default gateways. And so these are 8700s, all connected with 10 gigabit ethernet links. And you could have more than just these three, but we're just showing these three. So uh, what this basically, the protocol that this is modeled on is VRRPE or extended. And what we're basically doing is creating one virtual IP address across all of these different default gateways. Now this is extremely useful in layer two extension kinds of configurations and also for those who are really in the know, tromboning as well. So what we basically are showing here is that we're going to uh, inject a lot of traffic uh, through uh, the Ixia gear up into like the 6700 or 8700 uh, with the IP virtual IP address. And what we're going to show is that as we approach 
or exceed the link of any one of these default gateway links is that we're going to start seeing the VDX um, and the VCS fabric start to distribute that load across all three of these uh, default gateways. So we'll go from one uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet link to 20 and to 30 gigabit Ethernet links and spraying them all across the default gateways. Very unique in the industry, never been done before. Uh, again, this is for N different gateways, meaning we have, um, we're showing three default gateways here. We can go even higher as well. So that's what we're going to be showing. Let's go take a look. All right, so we're back again and we're doing the layer three active active N gateway um, test. So this is really important for a couple of reasons. One is that this is an industry first uh, in terms of having three active default gateways and even more uh, that can simultaneously route traffic. Um, so uh, it's one virtual IP address and it's load balanced across all three of them. Okay, why is it important? Mainly because of in very large data centers when you have a lot of servers in lots of different virtual um, or uh, virtual lands, you want to be able to route between the two. So a lot of east-west traffic. So in order to avoid things like network tromboning and some weird traffic patterns, you can have a nice orderly east-west traffic flow with having multiple default gateways. So we're going to show how this really works. Um, and I have Javan with me that's going to help me through it. Hello. Hi, Annie. Hi, Javan. Yes. Great. Excellent. Okay. So the configuration is, is that we have 120 gig uh, coming into a top of rack server, and that is uh, pointing towards three default uh, gateways, each at 40 gig each. So that's the configuration. John, let's sure, take yeah. a look. Let, let's take a look at that one. So here I've got 24 links, 12 uh, connected to the top, uh, top of the rack, uh, to the servers, and 12 going to the fabric. So let's look at the fabric first. So these are our ISL links. And also for the audience as well, uh, this screen over here represents the top of rack switch, and then these screens here represent each one of the default gateways. So exactly, please, yeah. yeah. So we have 40 gig to each of the uh, each of the gateways. Now we can, what we will do? I'll show you the traffic that's coming in. So if we do show interface, the first 12 inter, uh, links have got the traffic coming in. So I'm gonna just highlight those. Great. So this is the this is the traffic that's coming in into the fabric. Right, so this is it's you know, pumping traffic in, yeah. and uh, we've actually set that uh, at nearly 55%, between 55 and 60% utilization of line rate. Okay. Yeah, Great. and that's uh, and now I'm going to show you the traffic that's going out. So that will be on the uh, last 12 links, so show if, if we do a uh, check the output. Yeah. So this is the traffic that's going out, and it's uh, these tra uh, this traffic, okay, right? So great. this is your traffic that's so, going out. Great. So this shows the distribution of traffic leaving the top of rack switch destined to uh, the default gateways. And, you know, so it's a little bit uh, distributed. So we have 50% here, 80%, you know, on a couple of links and so forth. So a nice distribution. Right. Exactly. And then I'm going to show you on one of the gateways how the traffic is coming in on those four links. So if we do the same thing, input, and this is the traffic coming in. I'm going to quickly zoom in and show you. So these are the four links where we are receiving the traffic. Okay, great. So these are this is basically 40 gigabits worth of traffic, 10 gig each on four points, and that's the distribution coming in. So pretty uniform. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, our layer one uh, <laughs> multipathing that's work, uh, coming into effect. Uh, now if I do this, show, uh, show interface, and I'm going to show you what is the traffic going out this interface. Uh, the same ISL ports, so that's your traffic going out. Let's zoom on that. So this is the traffic that's going out. Very good. Okay, and also too, a uh, very nice distribution, you know, of traffic. Right. Excellent. Okay. Now on this one, let's take another look. So let's look at the traffic that's going out, uh, back to the Ixia. So that's your traffic that's going out. So you see these uh, 12 links. Okay, great. So. Excellent. Very good, very good. So um, these are, uh, so in the Exio gear we have, um, that's where the traffic was destined. It was coming in and it was, has to come back up uh, to the, uh, to the Exio gear. Yeah. Great, yeah. excellent. So uh, we want to show you how uh, layer three traffic can be load balanced and distributed across uh, N different active, active uh, default gateways. Uh, this is how it looks and this is how it's done. And again, this is extremely important in data centers to have nice orderly east-west traffic flows and to avoid some strange kind of traffic patterns that result with having one default gateway and all the other um, gateways pointing to it. So, Javan, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick. Oh, great. Yeah. Excellent. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. 
To get your free subscription to the Lippus Report newsletter, go to www.lippus.com. To sponsor the Lippus Report podcast, send email to sales at lippus.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.